On May 14, 2008, a mysterious object plummeted from the sky near the town of Needles, California, forever etching this event into the annals of UFO lore. This incident, which involved local eyewitnesses, military helicopters, and strange men in black, has captured the attention of UFO enthusiasts and investigators for years. Despite denials from official agencies and the disappearance of key witnesses, the Needles crash remains one of the most intriguing and well-documented UFO cases in recent memory. Hey friends, welcome back to The Unknown Above, where we explore the mysteries of space and the strange phenomena that continue to baffle us. Today, we're diving into two unexplained UFO encounters that have left witnesses and investigators scratching their heads for years. On May 14, 2008, a mysterious object crashed near Needles, California, triggering one of the most intriguing UFO cases ever. In today's episode, we'll explore this and the equally baffling Cash Landrum UFO encounter in Texas. Before we dive in, a quick reminder, I offer professional voiceover work, speaking engagements, and have a collection of history books for all ages available on Amazon. Check out the information in the notes below. In the early morning hours of May 14th, at around 3 a.m., Frank Costigan, a former chief of airport security at LAX, awoke to let his cat outside. As he gazed into the night sky, he saw a glowing object streaking across the sky with a bluish-green hue. At first glance, it might have appeared like a meteor, but according to Costigan, the object behaved in ways no ordinary meteor would. He noted that the object initially moved very fast, slowed down for a brief moment, and then accelerated again before vanishing behind a hill. Costigan waited for a sound that would confirm the object's impact, but heard nothing. He was certain, however, that the object had crashed based on its size and trajectory. Hours later, other witnesses in the Needles area would also come forward to share their own accounts of what they saw that night. One of the most notable witnesses was a man who goes by the name Bob on the River. Bob lived in a houseboat along the Colorado River, and he, too, saw the object as it blazed through the sky. According to his account, the object didn't crash with the explosive force one might expect. Instead, it hit the riverbank with a soft thump, as if it had landed rather than crashed. What followed the crash would prove to be just as mysterious as the object's descent. 17 minutes after the object hit the ground, military helicopters arrived in the area. Bob described seeing at least five helicopters, including a massive sky crane helicopter, which is commonly used for lifting heavy objects. This sky crane, according to Bob, quickly hooked onto the downed object, which was still glowing, and airlifted it away, heading in the direction of Las Vegas. David Hayes, the owner of KTOX Radio and Needles, witnessed a strange convoy of vehicles in the hour following the crash. He described the vehicles as dark military-style trucks, some of which appeared to be equipped with advanced surveillance equipment. He even had an unsettling encounter with one of the drivers, who seemed to be following him. As the day wore on, these mysterious men in black vehicles were spotted around town. According to multiple witnesses, the men in these vehicles had a distinctly military bearing, but were not in uniform. They were seen near the radio station, seemingly conducting surveillance of the area and possibly even monitoring local witnesses. The object that crashed near Needles sparked a wave of curiosity and concern among the local population. While some believed it could have been a downed aircraft, many were convinced that it was something far more unusual. Frank Costigan, with his extensive experience in aviation, was certain that what he saw was not a plane or any conventional craft. Likewise, Bob on the River, who initially thought it might have been a plane crash, was left bewildered by the lack of an explosion or traditional crash sounds. In the hours and days following the incident, locals began piecing together bits of information from various witnesses. The presence of helicopters so soon after the crash, the odd behavior of the military-style vehicles, and the glowing object itself all suggested that this was no ordinary event. The story gained traction when it was picked up by local media. The CBS affiliate in Las Vegas, along with independent journalists, began investigating the incident. Notably, Investigative reporter George Knapp, known for his work on Area 51 and UFO phenomena, delved into the case. 
His team conducted interviews with witnesses and began filing Freedom of Information Act or FOIA requests with various government agencies in an attempt to find out what had really happened to Needles that night. Unfortunately, these efforts yielded few results. Many agencies either denied any knowledge of the incident or stated that they had no records to provide. The Federal Aviation Administration, or FAA for example, claimed that it did not retain records of aircraft in the area at the time of the crash. However, the investigative team did manage to obtain a single transponder reading that confirmed the presence of at least one military helicopter in the vicinity on the morning of May 14th. Additionally, records revealed that a detachment of the U.S. Army Special Operations Aviation Regiment, known as the Night Stalkers, was operating out of Henderson Airport in Nevada during the same time frame. This elite group of helicopter pilots is known for conducting covert missions, and their presence in the area only added to the mystery. As the investigation into the Needles crash continued, several key witnesses either disappeared or refused to speak further about the incident. Bob on the River, who had been one of the first to report the crash to KTOX radio, suddenly vanished. Friends and acquaintances reported that they had not seen or heard from him in weeks following the event. His disappearance remains unexplained, and efforts to locate him have been unsuccessful. Other witnesses, including those who had seen the mysterious vehicles or helicopters, grew increasingly hesitant to discuss what they had seen. Some expressed fear of retaliation or being watched by the men in black who had been seen around town. This atmosphere of fear and paranoia only fueled the growing belief that something extraordinary had taken place in Needles, and those involved were actively trying to cover it up. As with many UFO incidents, the Needles crash has spawned a wide range of theories. Some believe that the object that fell from the sky was an extraterrestrial craft and that the military swift response was part of a long-standing effort to recover and reverse engineer alien technology. This theory is supported by the accounts of witnesses who described the object as glowing and unusually shaped, as well as by the presence of the black helicopters and military personnel. Others suggest that the object may have been a top-secret government project, possibly an experimental aircraft or weapon that malfunctioned and crashed. This would explain the rapid response by the military and the involvement of the Night Stalkers, who are often tasked with retrieving sensitive materials in such situations. There's also speculation that the object could have been part of a joint U.S. military and private aerospace project, with companies like Lockheed Martin or Northrop Grumman testing advanced technology in remote areas like Needles. This theory is bolstered by the proximity of Area 51 and other secretive military installations in Nevada. Regardless of the true nature of the object, the Needles crash has left a lasting impression on those who witnessed it. The lack of official explanations, combined with the disappearance of witnesses and the eerie presence of the men in black, has cemented this event as one of the most compelling UFO cases in recent history. Now, let's dive into another similar case that still remains a mystery. In the early morning hours of December 29, 1980, what began as a peaceful drive home for Betty Cash, Vicki Landrum, and Vicki's seven-year-old grandson, Colby, turned into one of the most documented and baffling U.S. incidents in U.S. history. The three were driving on a remote road in East Texas, near the small town of Huffman, when they encountered a bright, glowing object hovering above the road. This sighting, which would later become known as the Cash-Lundrum UFO incident, not only left the witnesses physically affected, but also raised serious questions about government involvement in military cover-ups. That night, Cash, Lundrum, and Colby were returning home after having dinner in Dayton, Texas. They were driving along a two-lane road surrounded by pine trees when they suddenly noticed a bright light in the distance. As they continued driving, the light grew more intense, and eventually they could make out the shape of a large, diamond-shaped object hovering above the road. The object emitted an intense heat and appeared to be spewing flames from its underside. Frightened but curious, Cash stopped the car in the middle of the road, just 65 yards from the object. Landrum, a deeply religious woman, initially believed the object might be the second coming of Christ, as it was so bright and awe-inspiring. However, her belief quickly turned to fear when she realized that the intense heat radiating from the object was becoming unbearable. Colby, terrified, began to cry, and Landrum urged Cash to drive away. 
Cash, however, had gotten out of the car to get a closer look at the object. The heat was so extreme that when she touched the car's metal exterior, it burned her hand. After several minutes, the object began to ascend. But as it did, a group of military-style helicopters, later described as being Chinooks, appeared on the scene. According to the witnesses, there were at least 23 helicopters surrounding the object. The object moved slowly in the sky, with the helicopter seemingly escorting or possibly even attempting to capture a containment. The group was astonished by what they were seeing, but quickly realized that they needed to get out of the area as the heat and intensity of the light were becoming unbearable. Cash, Landrum, and Colby resumed their drive, but all three began to experience symptoms of illness almost immediately after the encounter. Cash was in the worst condition. Her skin was red and blistered, and she experienced severe nausea and vomiting. By the time they returned home, all three were feeling extremely unwell. Over the next few days, Cash's condition worsened dramatically. Her symptoms were consistent with radiation exposure, severe headaches, nausea, diarrhea, and blisters covering her skin. Landrum and Colby also experienced similar, though less severe, symptoms. Cash was eventually admitted to a hospital, where she remained for over two weeks, and her health continued to decline over the following months. She developed painful sores, hair loss, and vision problems, all of which were consistent with radiation sickness. Concerned about their health and seeking answers, Cash and Landrum contacted local authorities, but they were met with skepticism. They were eventually referred to the Bergstrom Air Force Base in Austin, Texas, where they provided statements about the incident. However, the Air Force denied any knowledge of the event and claimed that no military operations had taken place in the area on the night of the encounter. Frustrated by the lack of response from the military and government, Cash and Landrum sought legal action. They filed a lawsuit against the U.S. government, seeking $20 million in damages for their medical expenses and suffering. The case was based on the assumption that the helicopters they had seen were part of a military operation and that the U.S. government was either responsible for or aware of the UFO. The lawsuit was filed in 1982, but it faced numerous challenges. The primary issue was proving that the helicopters were indeed military and that the U.S. government had knowledge of the UFO. Despite the witnesses' detailed descriptions of the helicopters and the object, the government continued to deny any involvement. The Department of Defense conducted an investigation into the incident, but concluded that there was no evidence to support the claim that military helicopters had been in the area that night. In court, Cash and Landrum's lawyer, Peter Gersten, argued that the U.S. government was neglecting in failing to protect its citizens from a potentially dangerous aircraft or spacecraft. However, the case was dismissed in 1986 due to a lack of evidence. The court ruled that there was no proof that the helicopters were owned or operated by the U.S. government, and without that connection, there could be no liability. Despite the dismissal of the lawsuit, the Cash Landrum incident remains one of the most compelling UFO cases in history largely due to the physical effects experienced by the witnesses and the involvement of military helicopters. Over the years, several theories have emerged about what exactly happened that night. One popular theory is that the object was an experimental military aircraft or spacecraft, possibly developed using reverse-engineered alien technology. Some UFO researchers have speculated that the U.S. government was testing a nuclear-powered craft and that the helicopters were part of a recovery or containment operation after the craft malfunctioned. This would explain the intense heat and radiation-like symptoms experienced by the witnesses, as well as the presence of so many military helicopters. Another theory is that the object was extraterrestrial in origin, and that the U.S. military was attempting to intercept or capture it. The idea that the government has been involved in secret UFO recovery operations has been a common theme in UFO lore, and the Cash Landrum incident fits into this narrative. The quick response time of the helicopters, arriving just moments after the object appeared, suggests that the military was either tracking the object or had prior knowledge of its presence. Skeptics, however, have offered alternative explanations. Some have suggested that the witnesses may have seen a re-entering satellite or a piece of space debris, which could explain the bright light and fiery appearance of the object. The helicopters could have been part of a routine military exercise or unrelated operation that just had happened to coincide with the sighting. However, 
This explanation does not account for the physical effects experienced by the witnesses. The most compelling aspect of the Cash Landrum incident is the physical toll it took on the witnesses. Betty Cash, in particular, suffered long-term health problems that were consistent with radiation exposure. In addition to the initial symptoms of nausea, vomiting, and blisters, she developed cataracts and had to undergo multiple surgeries over the years to address her deteriorating health. She never fully recovered and passed away in 1998, still believing that the UFO encounter was responsible for her illness. Vicki Landrum and her grandson Colby also experienced health problems, though to a lesser extent. Landrum reported persistent vision problems and hair loss, while Colby suffered from recurring skin rashes. Both maintained their account of the incident throughout their lives and insisted that they had seen something extraordinary that night. The psychological effects of the encounter were also significant. All three witnesses were deeply traumatized by the event and struggled to come to terms with what they had seen. They faced ridicule and disbelief from skeptics and government officials, which only added to their frustration and distress. Despite this, they remained steadfast in their story, refusing to back down or change their account. One of the most frustrating aspects of the Cash Landrum incident is the lack of accountability from the U.S. government. Despite the witnesses' detailed description of military helicopters and their efforts to seek answers, the government has consistently denied any involvement. The Department of Defense investigation yielded no concrete results, and the FOIA requests filed by the witnesses' lawyers were met with similar denials. The case has been cited by UFO researchers and advocates as an example of a government cover-up. The involvement of military helicopters, the witnesses' physical symptoms, and the lack of a satisfactory explanation all point to the possibility that the government knows more about the incident than it's willing to admit. Some have speculated that the object was part of a classified project and that the government is hiding the truth to protect its interests. The Cash Landrum UFO incident remains one of the most compelling and well-documented UFO cases in history. It stands out not only for the physical effects experienced by the witnesses, but also for the involvement of military helicopters and the lack of a satisfactory explanation from the government. The case has been featured in numerous books, documentaries, and television programs, and it continues to be studied by UFO researchers and enthusiasts. For Betty Cash, Vicki Landrum, and Colby, the incident was life-changing. They sought justice and answers, but were ultimately met with indifference and denial from the government. Despite this, their story has endured, and it serves as a reminder of the potential dangers of unexplained phenomena and the lengths to which governments may go to keep the truth hidden. The Cash Landrum incident remains a mystery to this day. Whether it was a secret military project, an extraterrestrial craft, or something else entirely, the witnesses' experience and the physical evidence they provided continue to fuel speculation and debate. The case highlights the challenge of investigating UFO sightings and the difficulties faced by witnesses in seeking recognition and accountability. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Unknown Above. If you found these stories of UFOs and mysterious military operations as intriguing as I did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the unexplained. Don't forget to tap that notification bell so you're always in the loop for my next upload. What do you think happened in California and Texas? Are these encounters proof of extraterrestrial activity or something more terrestrial? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious and keep watching the skies.